outer space! Since the first cave people turned their heads up in wonder, since the earliest shepherds named the constellations, man has looked up at the stars with awe and a thirst for understanding. Now, in the waning days of 1956, man will have to learn a new emotion as he stares into the heavens. Fear! I fix cars, I hunt rattlesnakes, I watch shooting stars, I drink bourbon. Hi, Zeke. You haven't called me in ages. Do you know anything about that meteor? My dad thinks it might have been something else. I was just on my way to investigate, but these new shoes are killing me. Would you be a dear and go check it out for me? Hook up with me later at the diner, okay? Oh, Zeke. You know I can never figure myself out. How can I expect you to? Someday I'll know what I want. 
The little brat can be a real devil, but there's no doubt that he's a smart little devil. Dad, I couldn't ask for a better father. He's kind and gentle and wise. Of course, sometimes he gets too wrapped up in his work, especially during the last few years since Mom died. But I'm a big girl now. I can take care of myself. My dad thinks that any race of creatures advanced enough to travel the vast gulfs of interplanetary space must be advanced enough to have developed high moral values and a great love for peace. As for me, I don't know what to think. Hi, Z. You're the friendliest boss I ever had. What other bosses have you had? Oh, actually, I guess you're the only boss I ever had. You know me, Zeke. I just love working here so much. You and Joe and Zoe are just the greatest people in the whole world. You think the shooting star with the rocket from outer space? Carrying all kinds of monsters, probably. I've heard that monsters like that can just absorb people right into their bodies and just keep getting bigger and bigger the more people they absorb. Gross, huh? Mmm, <laughs> oh Zeke, this is a magic night. First the shooting star, and now this. Is the magic gone now, or will you kiss me again? Right, Z. We've been working together for a few hours now. I'm glad you finally got around to saying hi. What's with the Inquisition, Z? You think maybe I've become a calming sympathizer or something? You really think that was a spaceship that landed out there in the desert? You know, that reminds me of an article I just read in the National Defiler. Said they'd set off a few atom bombs in the wrong spot. And the Earth was starting a long spiral into the sun. Said things were going to start getting real hot. Real soon. Mmm, it's about time you got around to kissing me, you big galoot. 
I figured the idea would seep through that female wall you call a skull. I finally got that pro business hose out of the general's engine, but I still haven't been able to get that darn Beegis valve out. Hi, Izzy. If they need you out at the pump, I've got things under control here. Be done in a few minutes. By the way, you can tell the professor that those special order parts came in today. Is he building another invention or something? You mean that meteor thing might have been a rocket? From outer space? Probably filled with all kinds of incredibly handsome space hunts. My sister says that space creatures look just like us, move right into our cities and marry us, and infiltrate our culture, and that's how they take over. You wouldn't let that happen here in Adam City, would you, Zeke? Hmm, what's gotten into you, Zeke? Nothing's gotten into me, yet. Hey, the inside of the general's car sure looks roomy, hmm? Last one in is a rotten egg. Hiya, Jimmy. Hi, Z. Did you know Mercury has an average surface temperature of 450 degrees Kelvin? I'm gonna be a spaceman when I grow up. I figure if I learn everything in the whole world, 
I'll be such a valuable crew member that every rocket captain will want me. Oh, what do you expect? She's a girl. She's only interested in yuck stuff like clothes and makeup. It was here, just a little while ago. It took the iron. I gave it a glass of water, but it didn't want it. According to the French researchers Le Plum and Vernier, a germanium-based life form could ingest only radioactive isotopes. And openings in its dermal layer could only be packed with sulfurized liquefied rubber. Radioactive isotopes would be food to a germanium-based life form. You'll never be able to get any, though. The only isotopes within hundreds of miles are in the base, and the Army never lets anyone in without super high clearance. Sulfurized liquid rubber could be used to repair wounds in a germanium-based life form. If I had lab equipment, I could make you some. You'll need some rubber, of course, and a liquefying agent. Some form of distilled corn-based ethyl should do the trick, and of course the sulfur. John Weather, it looked like a perfect night for studying the occultation of Saturn and the Horsehead Nebula, and then suddenly it clouded over. Dog, hope I got here quickly enough to prevent major flooding from the mountain. You big huggable lunk! I see you're alone, cowboy. I get off in a few hours. That is, my shift is over. You 
must mean that thing that attacked me a while ago. I chased it away, but the boss is gonna kill me when he sees all these broken dishes. I didn't get a good look at it, but it tried to grab me with those fine like things. So I think it was like, like this three-legged plant, and it was trying to blind me so it could eat me, you know? Yeah. See, you may not be the greatest tipper, but don't let nobody tell you that you don't know how to treat a lonely waitress.
Hey, look. I only deal with my regular. I'm a respectable girl. I don't do just anybody. By the way, be a dear and drop this off at General Witchfellow's house, just at the other end of Adam Avenue. Permission to pass, Sergeant. Hi again, Z. Then my dad was right. We should go tell him about it. Oh, Zeke, you know I can never figure myself out. How can I expect you to? Someday I'll know what I want. A little brat can be a real devil, but there's no doubt that he's a smart little devil. Dad, I couldn't ask for a better father. He's kind and gentle and wise. Of course, sometimes he gets too wrapped up in his work, especially during the last few years since Mom died. But I'm a big girl now. I can take care of myself. Damn it, woman. I can't stand it anymore. Let's... 
forget this madness for a while and let me kiss you in places you didn't even know existed. You gotta come right away! He's in his lab! Something's coming in on the interplanetary radio! Listen! It's some sort of important message, and it's from outer space! You are under attack by an invasion force from Planet X. They plan to attack our peaceful little Phobos after conquering the Earth. Will you accept our help in defending Earth by giving us landing coordinates for your sector? We detected interplanetary transmissions from this source. We're taking control here for reasons of national security. Everybody out! Just like my left nest half mother used to make, your kindness is matched by my gratitude. Less hungry now am I, but injuries are bad still. I won't shall I apply it. Oh! Never a better high pad recipe have I seen. Even in my native language, my gratitude I could not possibly express. Thinking I was that soon I would be intertwining I talk with my ancestors. Getting better I feel. Better will I now be at operating this translator, I think. I am no longer in immediate danger, but I am still lost on a strange planet, and my spaceship is in disrepair. Your 
aliens are a lot like your country. Alien invaders will come armed with these pod things. And if they put them near you when you fall asleep, you wake up dead and some alien is walking around looking exactly like you. Uh, something like that. A dependable model. My left eggling got together and bought it for me when I left the academy. Until that meteor storm yesterday, I'd never had trouble with it. I am too weak. Here, Earth friend, take these supplies and make the repairs. I read. Please remain seated while the vehicle is in motion, or you will be vaporized by hyperspatial forces. Have a pleasant journey. Thank you. Bart, tell us about Planet X. It is a beautiful world where fields of purple weeds sway in the wind and where the lyrical burp of blister birds can be heard during the warm summer evenings bathed in the glow of our seven major moons. The people are happy and peaceful. We have no traffic jams, no lawyers, and no insurance salesmen. TV commercials were banned generations ago. Truly a paradise. Unlike Earth, there are two intelligent species who inhabit planet X. The pulsating inconveniences, like myself, and the tan annoyances, who are repulsive, ugly humanoids. Not unlike yourself, but who nevertheless are fine world mates. 
lifetimes ago, Planet X was a primitive warlike world like your own. But we have long ago transcended such barbarism, and today the pulsating inconveniences and the tanned annoyances live together as equals, coexisting in peace, harmony, and health, with a level of luxury you can't even imagine. Sickness and disease have been abolished for generations. When the time comes for a planet Exion to depart life, his friends and eggmates gather to send him off in blissful contentment. Also, it's never hard to find a really great deli. Welcome to Planet X in the Spaceport Regency Hotel. Allow me to escort you to your suite. The Great Council requests your presence at once. Howdy, babe. Great weather you got here on Planet X. Since you are a visitor, Earthman called Zeke, we can forgive such an outburst once. But hear this well. In the council chambers, only the council members speak. Bar Stop El Nicky Nicky, son of Jelko Bar El Zeta Zeta. Report. Council will now deliberate. Bar stop El Nicky Nicky, son of Jelko Bar El Zeta Zeta. Your spaceship is repaired. The Council has decided that you and your Earth companions will travel to Phobos and attempt to thwart their evil plans of conquest. We give you this latest miracle of the research laboratories of Planet X. It is a self-recording record. It can record the sounds and voices in your vicinity. It may aid in your quest. We also give you this common invisibility shield. It enables you to move about unseen. Be quiet while using it or you'll reveal your presence. I am sorry that we cannot give you more help. We have no weapons. We are a peace-loving people, unequipped for treachery. Go now! Earthman called Zeke, and Earthwoman called Lydia, and remember that the good wishes of this council go with you. Thank you. 
fleet will be taking off in an hour. Earth beams are such naive suckers. Once we have subjugated planet Earth, we shall never want for servants again! This divan has a piece of lint on it. Have my mate shot. I changed the access code for the invasion fleet flagship. scheduled landing of that Planet X ship on Earth has given us our opening. That military moron on Earth gave us landing coordinates and has agreed to drop all defensive postures. What pathetic suckers. Our fleet will depart for Earth and by this time tomorrow, we will have a billion more love slaves. What was that, Melfinda? I didn't hear. I was, uh, occupied. Quite understandable. Let me repeat. On us. Good luck and we shall soon entwine arm and eye start back on planet X! Forget about the escaped prisoners. On to Earth, leather goddesses! Okay girls, take your station. Let's get this armada into outer space. Good work, Balfura. Piloting is your second best talent. Lubana, navigational report. We're right on course, your lustfulness. We will arrive in Earth's gravity well in 3.7 chronos. around that absurdly huge moon of theirs. Earth is finally in our grasp. 
I can hardly wait to see that pompous general's face when he finds out we've come to invade, not to defend his pathetic little planet. It will be wonderful to restock our private harem. Yes, the Earth men are so primitive, they have such raw energy. I don't want to downplay the pleasurable aspects of this conquest, but remember what else it brings us. With Earth under our thumb, we will be the unchallenged masters of the cosmos. Their teeming millions and rich resources will make our armies invincible. Those peace lovers from Planet X won't be able to stand in our way. Ooh, I love limitless power. Prepare for atmospheric entry. Nice landing, Balfura. I can't wait to see the Earthlings' faces when they realize they've been duped. Ah, here they come now. Hit the dirt, girls, and have your blasters drawn. The Earth will be ours. The unscheduled landing of that Planet X ship on Earth has given us our opening. That military moron on Earth gave us landing coordinates and has agreed to drop all defensive postures. What pathetic suckers. Our fleet will depart for Earth and by this time tomorrow, we will have a billion more love slaves. You've got to see it! Somebody came running out there with a radio, and the mob instantly turned on the leather goddesses. They were routed and fled back to Phobos, abandoning most of their spaceships. Their invasion fleet is crippled. Bakub El Nicky Nicky, son of Jelgobar El Zeta Zeta, I am hopeful that the poor reception accorded to you by some of my fellow Earthlings shall not sully your people's future relations with my planet. The existence of humans such as yourselves demonstrates that even a race as primitive as yours can produce individuals of worth and wisdom. I shall report back to my council that the people of Earth, with time, shall become a fine addition to the galactic family. And thanks to your unplanned visit to Earth, we will never again need to wonder, as we gaze at the stars whether mankind is alone in the cosmos. But Barth, your spaceship is sitting in a wrecked heap back on Phobos. How will you get home? Did I hear that someone is looking for a spaceship? Buddy, have I got a cream puff for you. I can tell you're a fellow with an eye stock for a bargain. Wait until you see this peach. Power everything. I know what, at this price I'm giving it away, but 
I've always had a soft spot for aliens. Lydia, Zeke, I'm exceedingly proud of you. When everyone else was losing their heads, you two kept your wits about you and acted with reason and humanity. Thanks, Professor, but... Today represents the dawn of a bold new age, and we are the witnesses standing at its portal. I foresee a golden future, when man and pulsating inconvenience shall stride side by side into the cosmos together. Yeah, great, but now... Oh, of course. You young ones want to be alone. Just goes to show what a silly old man I'm getting to be, forgetting all about the pleasures of you. Even now, on the brink of this grand new adventure, we're still humans, men and women, with the same needs, hopes and desires that men and women have harbored since we first climbed down from the trees. Oh, dear. I thought we'd never be alone. Girl, those Earthling pets slipped through our grasp again, but they haven't seen the last of the leather goddesses of Phobos. We'll come again, and from now on, no more Miss Nice Guys! <laughs> Watch for the thrilling final chapter of the Leather Goddesses of Phobos! Thank you. 